In this learning dialogue, we will talk about training and testing data. In our last video, we saw the three steps in machine learning. Uh, the first step is data collection and uh, selecting the algorithm is the second step and uh, training and testing is the third step. We talked about data collection uh, last week and also we saw introduction to what is machine learning algorithms in a previous video. We will talk about what is training and testing data in this video. Uh, in step 1, let us assume uh, you have collected 1000 students attendance performance in a mid term and also the final exam scores. Since I mentioned 1000 students, you may not have 1000 students in the current class. So, you have historical data say uh, students across 10 departments or 5 departments or their scores across multiple um, uh, courses something like that. So, your 1000 students uh, attendance uh, performance in midterm and also the final score. It can be that the same students uh, data from different courses also possible to have 1000. And uh, you, you check the data and you pre-process the data, there is no outliers, no errors, everything is checked. So, you have a data of 1000 students with all this two input um, uh, variables that is attendance and performance midterm and also the y is the final exam score. We want to create a model to predict the students final exam score. Step 2 is uh, selecting the algorithm. Let us say for this uh, sake of this example, you selected a simple linear regression algorithm or a linear regression algorithm with the two variables, not a single simple so multiple. Step 3 is training and testing. The question is which data pair will be used for training? you want to create a linear regression model. That linear regression model if you remember is y equal to some mx plus c. Which data you will use to create uh, that y equal to mx plus c to train the weights and m value and c value. So, what is the testing data set? Because testing data set means uh, you need a, a new students data without their uh, final score. So, what is the testing data set you want to use it? you know all the why because I said that it is a uh, 1000 students data you already have their final score also. What is the testing data set? Let us think about that last two uh, points as a question. Think what is the data pair will be used for training data and what is the testing data set? Uh, list down your answers after listing it down resume the video to continue. So, in uh, in ML, uh, we usually split the data into two sets uh, and use one for uh, training set and uh, one set for uh, testing. For example, you have uh, 1000 students uh, data. Um, so, let us consider you have uh, used 700 students data for training and 300 for a test. So, even the given the same data, we will uh, use uh, split the data into training and testing and use it. It is very uh, general we use split the data into two, but uh, recently uh, not recently say 5 years before we started uh, using a validation set also train set, validation set and test set. But let us not go into uh, that, let us see uh, keep it simple we have only two sets of data that is training and testing. So, that is a train data. 700 students historical data with uh, xi and yi information. Uh, so, 700 pass of xi and yi, xi can be x1, x2, yi is y only y because here we have only a performance only single variable. So, this pair is basically um, x1, x2 and y 700 sam pass like this. Okay. In a simple linear regression, the train model will look like this. Uh, I consider it only the simple linear regression, which means I have only one x, no x2, x3. So, let us not keep x2, only x1. So, this looks like uh, y equal to mx plus c, the slope uh, equation we studied in class 8 or something. So, the values of this 0.76 or the 3.2 are computed based on the training data. Given a 700 training data, the algorithm computes the value of this um, suppose uh, y equal to c plus m x. The c and m can be computed from the training data or the 700 data. Now, we use this model 
to predict the performance of the test data. In test data, we will give, uh, so the test data will be y predict, we will give uh, sorry 3.2 plus 0.76 x, this x is the test data set which is having x i and y i, but I lose only x i and apply here and I will get the y predict value. Okay. So, what I am saying is we split the data into two uh, training and testing, use the training data set to create the model, then you apply the, uh, the test data set input variable to predict y predict. Let us discuss in detail. Um, suppose uh, this is the equation uh, of the model we talked in the last uh, class. So, y prediction is 0.56 xi into 31.96, this is not the same, I just given some example here. Uh, consider you have a training data, uh, training data say 700, I am sorry. Consider you have a training data or training data say 700 data here and you have a testing data that is a 300 data value here. So, um, training data is x i, y i, you are given into simple linear regression algorithm, it comes up with this particular equation. So, how it works, we will discuss that in detail later, but consider as a black box, you are given this input to here and we got this particular equation, that is what it gives you. Uh, C can be some value, 0.76 is some value, I am just given an example, it is not a actual any score to fit this values because I do not have 700 data, I just have 3 data here to show. Now, you want to predict uh, the uh, test this performance of this particular linear regression model on a test data set. Now, you have like a 300 test set that is 300 values of x i, apply this x i to this okay, at each equation. So, you will have a y predict, y predict for each of this score like uh, for each x i you will have a corresponding y predict something comes out. So, in general we use, uh, so y is 700, y is 300, um, in general uh, we use uh, two third of data for the training, one third of data for the testing that is 666 data, uh, that is uh, 666 data for training and 333, uh, 34 data for testing. So, the output uh, will be y x, this uh, testing gate output will be x i, uh, this x i, this x i and this y prediction after applying the value here. Also, you know what is y 1 because uh, you are you already collected a supervised learning algorithm. So, you have y 1, uh, y i. So, this is a predicted value, this is the actual value in a test data set. Okay? Now, to compare these two, you might able to uh, validate the uh, performance of this system. We will discuss that in detail in next uh, lecture, but uh, just want to tell you that uh, you will get y predict here and you comparing y predict and y i, you get the validation of uh, performance of this particular uh, algorithm. So, you saw that we can split data into train and test. Um, do you think this is a drawback in splitting data into training and test just two third and one third? If you think what is a drawback? Just don't your, uh, your answers and resume the video to continue. So, there is a bias is the main problem in the particular data, um, I will explain what is that. Uh, you, you classified uh, the data uh, into simple uh, 666 and 333. How do you arrange the data? You might arrange the data based on the students in one class, first class 1, class 2, class 3 or based on the year they did the course in your subject or in the, in the university or in the college. So, when you split the data, there is a high chance that um, the test data sets are not belong or may not be even uh, related to the training data set. So, splitting a data as uh, simply uh, 666 and 333 will lead to bias because the students behavior will be totally different, that is a one thing. Also, uh, 
the data you selected uh, of the same students in different class uh, courses that is valid, but the data is from different batches say you are selected from one department or selected from other department and each department will have different teachers for different course. Uh, it is not just attendance uh, only impacts the students performance, attendance plus some other external factors like a teacher, uh, teaching material or the course difficulty level or uh, how, many, how many senior batches the students had all this information is needed. So, when you classify the data simply splitting into uh, uh, training and test set by random numbers say 66 or 333, it will not help, it will have bias. To avoid it what we can do, we can select the two third of data randomly from training instead of selecting the first 66, instead of uh, selecting the first 66 data as the training and the last 30, 334 data as the testing, we can randomly pick. 666 data for training and the rest of data as a testing. That is a one way to do that. Still the algorithm will be trained only for the trained data. The performance of the algorithm is tested only on the, the test data you have and it has trained only for the test data. So, how to avoid it? So, to avoid that error we will use cross validation. In cross validation we split the data set into uh, n sets. Use the n minus 1 data set for training and uh, left out set that is the set which you are not used for training for a testing. Repeat the same process n time with a different uh, test set for each time. So, to do that in de uh, detail let us see one example. Consider I want n equal to 4 which means uh, 4 fold cross validation. We call it as a 4 fold cross validation because you have to do the testing for 4 times like a 4 fold. So, I have a data. Uh, complete data I created into 4 different sets, uh, set 1 has 25 percent of data, set 2 25 percent, set 3 is 25 percent, set 4 is 25 percentage. Uh, why this 25 percentage? Because I have 4 fold, uh, if it is a total data is um, 100, I have 25 data. So, that is called 25 percentage in each set. I have a equal amount of data in the 4 sets. If you do not have equal amount, uh, it will, it is ok if you have one or, uh, one or more data is in one set, that is fine. So, what I will do in fold 1? In fold 1, uh, I will use uh, so set 1, set 2, set 3 for the training, uh, test set will be the 4. So, this test set will be tested now. Initially, I test the algorithm or the model which I created using the test set 4. All the test set used as a training. In the second fold, second fold I use 1. 2 and 4 as the training, this data as a test set. So, this data also will be tested now. Similarly, in the fold 3 and 4, uh, we will use the other sets, every all the data has been tested. So, this gives the performance of the algorithm, so this gives the performance of the algorithm in a complete uh, on all the test data available that is complete data, the end sample has been tested on the algorithm. Then uh, this is more uh, strong or more uh, comparable compared to a simple uh, split of 66 percent by 33 percent. It is always advisable to use the cross validation. So, how many fold to choose? Is it 4 or 5 or 10? It depends on the data set. Uh, it is always good to choose um, n equal to 10 or 10 fold cross validation is good. If you do not have that much data, uh, you can select uh, lesser number of fold. There is one, uh, one more type of cross validation is called leave one out. So, in this particular uh, uh, leave one out approach, suppose you have a n number of data set, the n is total number of features, Here in this case we have a thousand uh, students data right. If you have 1000 students data, uh, the leave one out will be, uh, this is the big end when you consider the total number of students. The n fold will be 999 fold cross validation or it is 1000 fold cross validation, um, but n, n minus 1 data will be used for uh, training. So, the leave one out we will lose again the n is also a 1000 fold. So, we will use 999 data for training, 1 for testing, we will repeat this for 1000 times. 
uh, that is more strongly um, uh, suggested now, but uh, it is a lot of computational uh, uh, computational time and it is computationally costly also. So, if you have huge data it is suggested go for a 10 fold cost validation or uh, depends upon your algorithm you can choose and uh, number of folds in the cross validation. So, in this uh, video we saw what is lining data and what is this data split and also we discussed what is cross validation. Uh, in the next video we will talk about some of the performance measures in the machine learning. Thank you. <laughs>